You want details? Bye. I drive a Ferrari, 355 Cabriolet. What's up? I have a ridiculous house in the South Fork. I have every toy you can possibly imagine. And best of all, kids, I am liquid. So, now you know what's possible. Let me tell you what's required. Life advice, rr at gmail.com. We have a couple quick hitters with this one. Uh, some people, most I would say most of the audience, would have no idea and ne will never be at Butterfly Karaoke in West Harbor, Connecticut. <laughs> but we had uh, our guy check in who apparently hosted it. Um, and he listens what? to the podcast. Yeah. He goes, anyway, I don't have a question, but I used to host Butterfly Karaoke night once a month or so. So he would, you know, he apparently it's so stressful. You can't do it every week. Um, and maybe he was a filling guy or whatever, but he knows the deal He goes, I think it's a period of time. I lost all patience for the human race. People thought you had a lifelong personal vendetta against them. If they weren't next in line, having sauntered in at 1130 in a full room, the all time anger Mount Rushmore is as follows from my experience. Someone burned my house down. Um, you trying to tread on me, bro. And then number three would be, what do you mean? I can't do paradise on the dashboard light at one fifty-five a.m. And this is genuine gingham and you will not tell me otherwise. Uh, there was one guy who dressed as Prince every week. I was there who would sing little red Corvette, pass the mic back and leave immediately. <laughs> Just get it in. I like it. Mission. Imagine, imagine driving around and be like, I got to stop at butterfly and do little red Corvette and then leave. <laughs> the again. people were counting on me. Yeah. Like, what are you doing tonight? I can't, I can't pick up the kids. Although that'd be a weird time to be picking up your kid at like 11 o'clock or something. So many $20 tips to skip the line to impress a date. I'm half convinced they paid to show up. Who's a jerk? Anyone besides Sia that sings Chandelier? Um, if one were affixed above the place, its life would have been short lived. I'm a little confused on that one. Can you guys help me out with what the hell that line means? This guy's yeah. 30. So I, you yeah. know, read again is life. He's talking about if there was a chandelier above the place it wouldn't have been there too long i think that might be her song i'm not a huge see a guy i know that shocks you mm, me neither it is yeah he's so disappointed or there's other people being right now be like no no you guys don't get it i don't i'm freely admitting if one were fixed above the place oh, oh oh wait 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 all right he's saying if there was a chandelier that was fixed i nailed above, that yeah i nailed yeah. that you got that good stuff okay and he said bartender was a monster though shout out okay there you go if you're in West Hartford, check it out. But don't, okay. I don't know what your expectations are supposed to be. Okay. Um, we got, we had a guy also check in on the wings who's around my age. And he said, he just wanted to let Kyle and Sarudi know that I was 100% right about wings. And there was just a, a wing boom, late 90s, early 2000s. And that's where, you know, sometimes the gap shows up. And I'm just telling you, wings were not what they are today. I yeah. I did have a few people hit hit me up on Twitter about that, saying that you were right, and not that I didn't believe you. I just I was surprised by it. So what did, what was like what was like bar food then before then? You know what did people eat when they were watching football? Games? Peanuts, right? P pizza. That's it. A pizza and peanuts. <laughs> yeah. No, guys would get them. I mean, I think that's the first time I had them is that they ordered a bunch, and you know there was this dive bar that we would go to when we were in college, and the, the owner would be like, "Hey, let's order some wings for guys." And, you know, sometimes they'd be so cheap and they'd order up like two dozen. There's like 10 guys around. You just be like, what the hell? What is, what's the math on this one? Uh, it wasn't the highest end bar. So there you go. Mm -hmm. The wings were good. Okay. Uh, this one just says apologies to Kyle, which I think we should just do. Hey, 34, 64, 255, former college athlete, still athletic and faster than you think, but definitely a little tubby. Sounds like a white guy. No question here. Just an apology to Kyle. I enjoyed Kyle when the podcast started. In fact, I like him so much. I went to follow him on Twitter. At the time, his Twitter bio was something like, quote, if you call me nephew to my face, I'll punch you in yours. Kyle. No, it was it was much cuter than that. I said, if you call me nephew, when you meet me, I'm a slap you. That's what I said. And I changed that a while ago. OK, I thought this was kind of a douchey thing to lead with. Uh, and it soured me on him. It was four years ago. At the time, I basically only knew him as nephew Kyle. And I'll admit that part of me was thinking I could definitely take this guy if he tried to punch me. Mm -hmm. Why? At what point of Kyle working on the Simmons podcast would you be going? I wonder if I could beat that kid up. That seems weird. But again, this guy's 6'4", 255. He's a big guy. Got a good reach. Yeah. He's a good guy. Okay. Um, fast forward to four years of life advice segments with a lot of sound advice. We haven't been doing it four years, I don't think, but that's okay. 
uh, and extremely entertaining stories, revelations from Kyle, and it is well past time that I officially apologized and end our one-sided feud that Kyle didn't know that he was in. For the record, finding out that Kyle is also a big guy who always used to carry a knife on him and who would definitely punch me in the face if he wanted to had little to do with my change of heart. It was almost all based on getting to know his personality. Kyle, once again, I'm sorry. You're great and keep doing what you're doing on the pod. Also, shout out to Saruti. Love you back to ESPN. All right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to add to that. I think that's, that's what's happened for a lot of people with Kyle over these adventures the last couple of years of him sharing more and more. Um, and there's times where people will ask me about Kyle, and then I'll forget and be like, oh, that is right. He did potentially embezzle from a Mexican fraternity. But those are allegations. Wait, did anybody actually call you nephew to your face like in public, though, and did you get mad about that? Not really. I just would foresee it happening. It did actually happen a couple of times. I'm not going to lie. And it didn't bother me, but um, I don't know. Just uh, sometimes you do something that makes you cringe later, and that's why it's no longer in uh, in mm. the top of my Twitter. You know what I mean? You live your life. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And how old were you when you did it? 25? Uh, geez, probably like 24, 22, yeah. 23. I can't maybe. even imagine. I can't imagine the dumb shit I'd be tweeting at, at 24, 25. Um, so don't even, don't even sweat it. Not yeah, at dude. all. Apology accepted. I'll have moments where I'm like, Hey, that wasn't funny. Like I'll see something I did seven months ago. And you're like, that was, what, where was your, what was your mood that day when you thought that was a good, good idea? Okay. Uh, all right, two more life advice here. This one should be quick. I don't think there's much debate on this one. Um, let me preface this by saying I'm not a terrible person. Again, I'm not even sure this one's real. Good start. I was not dating but seeing a girl for a while post-college. That ended positively, and I officially dated her sister for two years. All right, it happens, you know? I mean, I remember one time being interested in the sister. She wasn't entirely honest with her current situation, so I was like, hey, this is not really working out. And then I was like, oh, wait, like you've, you're like in a real thing. And, and then um, she was like, no, you should date my sister, though. And we went on a date. And I think I had, I think I had traveled or something. I, I don't know. We didn't, there was no love connection, Chuck Willery. Okay. So dates, hooks up with the sister after college, then dates the other sister for two years. All parties are aware of the situation. Everyone was civil besides their father. Well, okay. You know, I can't imagine being a dad and this guy is like, all right, whatever. Um, we've since broke up and the third sister is interested in me and very attractive. If she is comfortable with the baggage, should I pursue it? Don't use my name on the air. No shit. Also great show. Um, <laughs> pick another family, man. I don't care how hot she is. I think the third sister's drawing the line. Two, I can see it. It could be awkward. I mean, you think the dad hates you now. If that guy ever got like some sort of terminal health thing, he'd probably kill you. All right. So if he doesn't like you now, pick, just pick another family. Just pick another family. I get what you're saying. And usually guys lose out to the attractiveness thing. All the morals go out the window here. But if these two people like you and a third who's very attractive, there's probably some other people out there that you can spend some time with. So I get your point, but if if the dad ever finds out, I would I would hate you and I would contemplate doing things to you. So I would I don't think there's a lot of debate on this one. Kyle, you have no, date three sisters? No, never. It seems like this. I I had ran through about three best friends after about two years, but um, it sounds like this guy's becoming like a rite of passage or something. I wish he would have <laughs> given me that. I wish he would have given me the ages if he's just waiting for them to become college age or what's going on. Um, I, I, I do wish, I, I do wish there was a little more information here, but yeah, that's crazy. If this is real, don't do that. It's dumb. What, what is the, like, what's the end game here? So say this, you're dating this third sister and it works out well. Like, is the dad all of a sudden going to like you? Like, there's a good chance that this is never going to be a happy ever, and you know, happy ever after for you. So I just don't think you pursue it. And isn't it a massive red flag that, I mean, three sisters, like what's going on with the family that all three sisters want to date the same dude? This guy might just be the hottest and coolest dude ever. Maybe. Um, and He's if he the is, hall of his area. <laughs> but then that means there's plenty of other people who are going to like you, um, unless you're just so hypnotic and your pheromones are just linked chemically with this this gene of species. You know, I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, but Rudy brings up a good point because, like, what's the end game? Let's say, <laughs> just for hashing this out, sake. 
because I don't think that's what this is about. Let's say that, oh, you do hit it off and you do really like her and, and there's this massive connection and you feel like this is the one. That family dynamic is going to suck for you forever. You know, I think when you are thinking about who you want to settle down with, I don't know that the other person's family should be the number one priority. But, you know, I've I've been with people where the the family is like, oh my God, this family's amazing. And then there's other ones you're like, oh, this family's a bit more complicated. And when you're not locked in yet, you know, I think we all do this. If we're being honest, we weigh a bunch of the pros and cons about like, if I were to marry, marry this person, what, what would be, what would be some of the good things? What would be some of the bad things? And I, I do think family, there's times where you're like, oh my God, like sometimes you'll think of a family and be like, this family's amazing. And this would be awesome. And then you're like, whatever. This That's never going to happen for you, ever. Even if the family, well, clearly the daughter's like you. Um, no one else is going to think this is cool. But I don't think that's what this is about. I think she's hot and you're like, whatever. And then you're probably going to do it. But I'm just telling you, if you wake up with a your dog's head in your bed one day, you're going to have a pretty clear idea who did it. Definitely don't date. Just don't date. If you got to see. I, I wouldn't see. even do the, I wouldn't even do the third thing here, man. Mm. I, I just wouldn't. All right. Okay. Banned from a bar. Uh, my favorite local bar was hijacked by a failed relationship. Need advice. 26, 5, 11, 185. Hockey player body. 185? Yeah, I guess so. Skill never good enough to go pro. Oh, oh, really? Um, but always a top player in my club pickup games. Cool. I live in a second tier US. All right. And we got it. Okay, I live in a neighborhood about a mile outside of our downtown, only a few minutes walk away from the best neighborhood bar I've ever lived near in my life. Believe me when I say this bar is perfect. Here's a quick rundown of why. All right, I love this. Mix of social and secluded space. Beautiful outdoor patio. Great drink selection. Very affordable prices for the city. Casual enough that you don't have to feel dressed up to go, but nicer than a random dive bar. Popular, but never that crowded. Lastly, it has really cool bartenders. Sounds great. I'm there once a week, sometimes more. I've happily gone with just my housemate to shoot pool with a group of friends to stay late and dance. And on a few occasions for a day, I can continue to profess my love about what makes this bar's vibe so unique. So, uh, but I'll cut to it there. Earlier this summer, I met a girl on a dating app. We'll call her Natalie. Uh, for our first in-person meet, she said her favorite bar is the same one I described and asked to meet there. I thought it was a fun coincidence. I said, yes, when we got there, I saw Natalie was clearly friends with the bartenders and said she's here frequently as well. We hit it off and developed a summer fling going on several dates. She spent a few nights over at my place and we got along uh, with each other's friends. Great. And we, when we overlapped at parties. So, all right, you guys got a real scene here. Good for you guys. Back at it. I've never stayed at Natalie's place. She always came over mine. This was fine because I prefer sleeping in my own bed and know having a man over can be a sensitive thing for some people. So I definitely knew where she lived, which will be relevant later. Some people are sensitive about never sleeping at their place, just to round out the theory. Towards the end of summer, Natalie told me she developed more serious feelings for me and wanted to be in an exclusive relationship. I'm really valuing my independence right now and I'm only looking for something more casual, which was also displayed in my dating profile, so she knew this when we matched. Okay, but nobody... You start caring about somebody, you're not going to be like, well, I care about this person and they're not into me as much, so I will not be disappointed because the bio on their app was accurate. All right? That doesn't work, man. I told her a committed relationship wasn't right for me at the moment. I won't go into the details, but she took it pretty hard and we have stopped seeing each other. Okay, you've broken up. All right, we know this is going, as he said in the email. Here's the thing. Since we stopped seeing each other, I've learned from one of the bartenders that Natalie lives in the apartment building literally directly adjacent to the bar. In fact, her apartment's lobby windows have a complete overlooking view of the bar's outdoor patio and the bartender also told me she hangs out at the bar way more than i realized furthermore one night recently i went to play pool with my housemate and she was there she refused to speak to me when i said a simple hello somewhat blatantly talked to the bartenders about me uh and ever since the entire staff has been very cold and unfriendly with me all right i now feel super uncomfortable to be there which pains me because it was my go-to local spot i've turned down invites from friends to meet there for a drink and god forbid i can't imagine going there for any type of date or scenario again do i have to accept i am borderline banned from this bar even though we were never boyfriend girlfriend i feel like our split has caused me to be exiled from the bar my housemate thinks i'm overreacting but the idea of even by chance seeing natalie there or getting a dirty look from a bartender makes me anxious Thank you for reading. Shout out Kyle because the embezzling money from the Latino fraternity story is top five ringer podcast network moment of all time. Okay. Um, you are overreacting. Your friends are right. You saw somebody, it didn't work out. And as we've learned throughout history, we've been doing this a long time. One person usually isn't cool with it. All right. This is not new. Now, the fact that she apparently is there all the time, um, 
and lives there jams it up for you a little bit. This, all of this stuff will go away. All right. None of this stuff is permanent here, man. This is all temporary. And if you were cool and, you know, you were cool to the bartenders, you know, you and your buddies are generally well behaved, you know, maybe, maybe a couple nights there over the course of a few years, you, you, you let the wheels fall off, but you get my point. Like, unless you're a disaster showing up here every weekend, if you guys are cool and have been respectful and tipped and all that kind of stuff, then you have nothing to worry about. All right. I don't, this is all going to go away. And I actually think the best way to take this on is to just ram into it head on. Just keep going. Just keep going. If she wants to, I like, think about it when somebody, it's a weird feeling when somebody doesn't want to talk to you. All right. Like I've had it happen where there's a breakup. I see the person and then I'll be like, Hey, and then they don't look at you and then just walk past you. And you're kind of like, Oh man. But guess how, you know how irrelevant that all is? It's, it doesn't mean anything. It's complete. If that person wants to handle it that way, then let them handle that way. Let them be in their own little thing where they, that's, that's their protection mechanism, you know, defense mechanism or whatever they need to do to process all these feelings of resentment or whatever. There's been times where I got dumped and I still was like, Hey, how's it going? And then the person still, I was like, wait, this wasn't even my fucking call. And you're going to give me the cold shoulder. None of this matters is why I'm explaining. Like it's, it's all irrelevant and it all goes away. So I think you're overreacting. I get your point. I get like thinking, but I don't think all the bartenders are talking about, unless you're an asshole customer and, you know, breaking pool cues and date Mike, you know, which I don't get the sense that you are despite the hockey background, but 185, I'm not going to go there. Maybe incredible teardrops. That's maybe what you meant by that comment. Great. But. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, if you love this place, you clearly do. It's nothing like having your great spot and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you tip a little bit better, or maybe you pull aside one of the bartenders that you've developed some kind of relationship with. Um, don't make it weird though. Be quick with it, you know, especially don't do it when it's busy. Maybe they're cutting lines You're know, like, Hey, just want to say what's up. Like, I know she's a regular, I know she's here all the time. You guys really like her, but like, look, we dated and it didn't work out. And you know, this is my favorite spot. Here's a 20. Or maybe on the first round, don't just give them 20 bucks blindly because then it's a little weird, although they're not going to turn it down. First round, throw a 20 on top of it. And just be like, what's up? I mean, tipping solves a lot of problems. Solves a lot of problems. You're not going to have to do it every single time. But yes, you're overreacting. Your friends are right. Don't You're not banned. Don't ban yourself from it. And the quicker you keep seeing her and keep going, the quicker the end point is where everybody's just comfortable again. So that's why I would take it head on. Kyle? Uh, the good news is, is that from the headline, I thought he actually was banned from the bar and I was going to feel really sad for him. He's not banned. He's overreacting. What I would do is not say anything, maybe bring out the new guy in town, uh, new guy to the bar, big tip thing. Just, you know, just cause you got to do that every once in a while. Maybe it's been a while since you over tipped. I would say nothing. I would just do what you said, like grind it out, continue to have fun. It's not even a grind. It's just like, don't worry about order your drinks, hang out with your friends. Um, you know, if you feel like nobody's as, they're not as friendly as they used to be, that will probably change. Half of it's probably in your head. You know, I doubt that she was blatantly, I mean, I could be wrong, but I doubt that she was blatantly talking about you and pointing at you to the bar. I mean, like I said, I could be wrong, but I think there's a lot of this is in your head and you'll, a lot of, um, if you, you feel like it's, it's going to be harder for you to have a good time right now, knowing all the stuff that you know, but I think a lot of that's in your head. And the good news for you is beer will definitely help you fix that while you're in the moment. So, yeah, you're totally fine. I wouldn't even say anything to the bartenders. Just be a cool guy like you know you are. No, it's a good point. I, I think this thing will completely blow over. And, you know, if here's the thing. If she's like talking shit to you to the bartenders, isn't shouldn't that be a red flag to the bartenders too? Like if you come in there and you're actually a cool, enjoyable guy after a couple of times, they're like, hey, what? this guy's actually pretty cool. And they end up liking you. I think th I, this is not a long-term issue for you at all. And if she wants to keep being petty, then who cares? But I think the bartender thing will probably solve itself pretty quickly. So, Kyle, you don't like the tip thing at all. No, I do. I'm saying, like, you know what? Maybe do that thing. Like, whenever I, I go to a bar and I think that I'll be coming back, I'll do I'll do the big tip the first time. And then I like I kind of do like quarterly big tips, or maybe not quarterly, but um like every yeah, we once get in a while. It, right. Yeah. So yeah, it's like no. maybe it was just time for you to do that again. So they'll be like, Oh yeah, fucking Tommy over there. Yeah, I remember Tommy. I don't know. Yeah, like Tommy's just, everybody likes Tommy. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get to Saruti's point because you're right. Isn't that a red flag? But here's the counter to Saruti's point. 
how many of the bartenders are female? Because if she's a regular and she's there all the time, she's like, oh, this guy sucks. Even if she's totally wrong and they think she's kind of off, they're just going to agree with her. You know, we're all picking sides here and they're going to take her side. And then here's the other part. If she's kind of attractive and she's a regular and there's male bartenders, there's probably a pretty good chance she hung out with one of those guys at some point. Um, like there's a really good chance. So it may not have anything to do with you. And I may be just added to your anxiety to this whole deal, but that could also be part of it. Even though if she hung out with one of those bartenders, maybe she called it off and then he still likes her. I'm just telling you, if there's a bunch of guy bartenders and she's cute and she's there all the time, she's probably hung out with one of those guys. So that could be part of it too. Um, but taking it head on, look, it's a bar. It's not a family. All right. It's, it's where you want to hang out. You have fun. Like think, think what's worse going All right. Maybe there's a couple of people in here that don't like me. Let's have some beers with my friends, or I'm going to stay inside while you guys go to my favorite place in town because, <laughs> because of a dating app thing that didn't work out after a couple of months. So just take it head on. The anxiety will go away. And like Kyle said, there's beer there. So <laughs> totally helps. <laughs> I don't want to let this go. Have any of you guys ever been banned from a bar? Saruti, chirping Saruti um, back in the day. You were chirping the bartender, maybe in college. Yeah, uh, not yeah. like permanently, but yeah, I've never been like kicked out. <laughs> Kindly asked to leave a bar. Yes, but not 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 like hey, you not never banned. Come back. Like, like there's, there's not, not a picture of me on the okay, wall. That's yeah. funny. All right, good. There was uh, there was definitely an incident where I, there was there was an understanding that I wouldn't be back the next weekend. So. Um, but the thing low. is, I was suspended. Yeah, I was. But the thing is, is I was in it. I was in the mix, so they <laughs> they couldn't. Like it was, to, it was, it was. To, I was like, "Yep, you're right." Like, no problem. And then it was fine. It was. I deserved it. Uh, it was. It was totally fine. But it, it, there was. It was a fight. But there was nothing uh, like. I, there was nothing. <laughs> like there was no way I was ever. It wasn't going to be a permanent thing because we were all bartenders. So it was just understood. So you just, you know, sometimes in life you get to lay low <laughs> and understand it. And then you just go, all right, fine. And then, you know, you got to make sure that you, you don't fuck up at that place again. And, um, yeah, I mean, come on. Good to know. Well, what about you, Kyle? No, yeah, I, no, <laughs> I, no, I actually, I asked because I was actually, I was going to, I was happy that I didn't, I didn't have a yes to this one. I vaguely remember one of the bars in college that I felt like I couldn't go to, but I also didn't like it. But the reason I asked is because my friend, my one of my best friends back home is banned from like the, like probably what's the best bar in Poughkeepsie. And he's been banned <laughs> since he was like 18. He punched a bouncer in the face when he was 18. All the same bouncers work there. His picture's still up there. We've tried. I mean, it's been 10 years now. And like every time we're That's home for crazy. Thanksgiving, he can't get the same people at the door. They all look the same. He looks the same as he did when he was 18. He just can't get in. Everyone else is like can get in. And then he's like, we try it every once in a while because it's like on the waterfront. It's the best bar. It's where the most people are. And he has not been able to get in there for 10 years because he punched a bouncer in the face when he was 18. Yeah. See, when as you guys are talking about, you know how hard it is to like be banned permanently? Like that's that's almost it doesn't really happen. Like we had guys when I worked regularly that did awful, awful shit. And then you know, six months later, the guy would kind of come in sheepishly, look at you, and you'd be like, all right, you know, just keep an eye on him. And if, if he does something again, and more often than not, like the person's not going to do again what they did before. I mean, they just, it's weird. Like sometimes you just see how it goes. Like I remember one night, um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, because there's two different stories, because there were both times I was pretty scared. Um, when I was working and cause you know, I just think it's always important. Like I was, I was a skinny guy. The reason I'm, um, you know, bigger now or whatever and worked on some things is because I hated it. I hated being skinny. I hated feeling like I was soft. I hated, you know, I, I felt like I had a big tough dad and he was, and I, you know, know some of the stuff that he went through growing up and he's six, five and he's an athlete and he wore construction and he started laying brick walks. And you know, that that's just being fucking tough on its own, being out in a hot summer day, pounding away with a rubber mallet, trap rock dust and laying brick walks. But, you know, I knew he, I knew he was a tough guy and I didn't feel like I was any of those things. And I hated, I hated it so much. And so once I finally filled out and then I started kind of realizing like being athletic and then, you know, working on a couple of things, 
I was, I kind of had a little phase where I was, I was like, oh, maybe I'm actually like, I got a little something going on. But it wasn't until much later. It wasn't until like my mid twenties. But I mean, there were still moments like I wasn't a tough guy, tough guy or anything like that. And we had a guy, we had a guy who was just huge. And he just, I think, turned 21. But the major red flag was like he was like a Vermont local. And again, Vermont, once you get outside of the Burlington area, that's basically like Arkansas, but it's colder, you know? And this kid would come in and he was like, I don't know what he did, but the kid went on like an absolute, I just turned 21 solo bender. And he was from out in the woods. And everybody was hearing about him like, oh, this guy's just showing up and, and just getting destroyed. And he had a thing at one bar and then we were all like hey did you hear about this kid the other night like it took seven guys to get him out of there and there was some really tough guys that worked at this other bar that i used to work at and um these guys were like legitimately tough they were like normal academy guys they're all jacked up they were they were tough guys and we were not over at the place that i worked at and <laughs> the kid showed up and we were like what do we do and the owner's like well is he hammered i'm like i don't think so i was like he's just weird and he, he's the guy, I guess, from just a couple nights ago that caused this huge scene. So the owners were like, well, we can't, we can't just kick him out preemptively. And I was like, we probably could, though, because well, this kid was, was out of control. And so, of course, I don't know. He just had something weird. Like, I don't know if he was drinking before it or whatever, or he never, ever drank in his life. So he had no idea of pacing or whatever. Look, people can drink their entire lives and screw up their pacing. But he, he just locked into the, the service area like bars, you know, where that area where if you don't go to a bar a lot, you're like, hey, look at this wide open spot between these two brass bars right at the bar. No, I can't believe nobody was in here. And you're like, yeah, there's a reason no one's in there because you're not supposed to be in there. It's for the waitress. And so he just locked in and then he started reaching over when I went to one out of the end of the bar, he would reach over into my well and start making himself drinks. Oh I've God. told this story, I think, before at some point. It's new to me. And he just, yeah, he just started making his own drinks, which is actually pretty alpha like in a way now be, looking yeah. back i kind of respect it and he just started making those own drinks i was like what the fuck and i knew there was nothing there's nothing I, I wasn't gonna be able to move him he would have beat the shit out of me there was like nothing i could do there, i just wasn't gonna be able to do anything with this guy and i unfortunately I think that night might have been the the go-to guy to try to get rid of him and i was like fuck and so he uh he just was like locked himself into the well. He did the same thing again at the other place. Now that I remember, because that was why they had such a hard time with him. So he and I are like literally wrestling each other through the entire place. Like it's a scene out of a movie and I'm trying to get him to the door. I'm trying to get him to the door. The only thing that's happening is that he's so drunk that I have a little bit of an advantage. And I'd say the other advantage I had in my mid twenties, I was likely angrier than everybody else. So if I got really, <laughs> really mad, there was a chance. And he was, the line was out the door to get in. So I'm like trying to get him up the staircase. I'm trying to get a drunk guy who's bigger and tougher than me, who's out of his mind. I'm trying to get him up a staircase out into the street. And he's ripping at my shirt, which happened twice because it was these biker guys showed up, but they were like fake biker guys. And he was tearing at my shirt and like it was i was like holy shit like and the thing that sucked was that all of these people waiting in line all knew who i was like there were some of my my friends that were in line too because it was early it wasn't really late it was it was early spin doctors and he was ripping at my shirt and we were we were squaring off we were squaring off and i was like i'm gonna get my ass kicked in front of every one of my friends here right now and I don't think because he just he was one of those kids. He had huge arms and his hands were big and his wrists were big and his waist was big. Everything about him was fucking big and he was detached and it wasn't. And luckily, luckily, he just he just backed down and then stumbled down the street. What the hell was that story about again? Getting banned from bar. Oh, no. Here's the point is our emailer. You didn't do any of that stuff. You just broke up with a girl <laughs> after an app. You're good. Good call. I want to get back to Kyle's thing really quick, though. I do feel like 10 years. I know it's a dick move. 18, you punch a, uh, you know, the guy in the face. But 10 years seems like enough time where he should be able to be let back in. Come on. It's kind change. of unheard of. It's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. No. I think people Pac-Man change, Jones man. is a lot of that strip club since then. Well, that was a little different. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we go there now knowing that he can't go. And we just like, it's like a stop on our way to the old bar or it's a stop on our way to another one. We're just like, let's just pop in. We'll have him say no. We'll all laugh and we'll get out of there. Let's pretend like we're going to go. Try to like wear a disguise. Um, he's climbed over the back gate before. I mean, that's when we were younger, younger. 
But like he's done some pretty like elaborate schemes, and now he just walks into the front door and just we're like, we'll see if we'll see if they've hired a new guy yet. He's gotten in he before. Outside. He's gotten in before, and then they find him like five minutes later, like from a guy who doesn't know he's banned, who's working the door. But ninety percent of the time, it's the same guys with the same mullet from ten years ago. They're still huge, and they still just won't let him in. It's absolutely insane. Why don't you guys just go to the? If you're all accepted regulars. You guys can't have a summit about this and just work it out. <laughs> no, these guys are so happy to not let him in. Like that, like come on. So now kid, it's a thing. Yeah, is they're he a so known happy. shithead though, or is it like mm, uh, maybe it back in the day thing? he was? Maybe back in the day he was. I'm actually very proud. Well, of if he growth. punched a bouncer in the face, he definitely had a shithead face. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Actually, now that you're saying that, totally. <laughs> like you don't really do that. Um, I mean, it didn't happen again. I bartended more than I ever bounced, but I did and. Of all the times I did it, I mean, I had like two things happen that weren't great, but it wasn't, you weren't out there thinking it was going to happen to you at all, especially, I don't know, you know, it wasn't like I was working at Buckhead in the late nineties either. I was in Vermont. So. Yeah. He was like 18 when he did that. I wasn't really sneaking into bars until like I almost, until the, almost the end of college. So I don't know. He was banned before I even started thinking about going to that bar. So I don't really know. His story is different, but it's a story of an 18 year old versus like a 30 year old. So I don't, I don't know. I hope one okay. day, I hope one day it works out. <laughs> Good luck to that guy. Good luck to that guy and everybody. Good luck to all of you listening. Um, please subscribe to the Ryan Russell podcast. Thanks to Kyle Crichton and Steve Sarubi and everybody involved. Bring your spot. Thank you.